Hi, folks, this is Mountain Man coming to you from Hearts Unknown. Well, how is everybody doing tonight? I got 30 seconds to uh, go, and I can't say any wordy dirds or any anything that's going to spark any problems. So uh, I'll just uh, say hi to everybody, and I want to thank you all for showing up tonight to the live stream and everybody that shows up after the live stream to check out what's going on and what we got to say. And uh, if we get some new voices, you know, that wondering what's going on, want to adjust their thinking about uh, what they've been told all these years, year after year, decade after decade, uh, you've come to the right place. Just don't use wordy dirds or cheap shots and insults. You got a question, you got a position, let's talk about it. Okay, we don't want an echo chamber here either. Hi, Wanda. How you doing? Doc, how you doing? Joan, Mary, Jersey Joe, Sherry. Nice to see you all. Well, I don't know if any of you had a chance to go to my uh, community page. How you doing, Bubba? Uh, but I put a post up there, and that's the reason. The, that post is the reason I put in my picture on my thumbnail. Fit for Princess. What is fit for a princess? Don't sneak out and go on my community page and cheat now. I want to, I want to, uh, what, what's going on in the world right now? Where I would say something's fit for a princess. No cheating. Ha ha ha. So, uh, and I'll, I'll tell you here in a minute. Now, now Sadie is playing a little game with me. You know, she, she's got a prima donna. A uh, bit going on. How you doing, David? Diane, Georgia. Jersey Joe for freedom. Ha <laughs> ha. What? I don't think you got to worry about that for freedom. Sadie, come here, baby. Uh, she wants to go out, and then she doesn't want to go out. And when I get into my broadcast voice, I talk real loud. And she's not used to that because usually I'm researching. I'm quiet. Um, Richard, how you doing? She should have took her chance when I held the door open. You know how they do. They twitch their tail and they look outside and then they turn around. Well, I don't want to go out. And they'll, or they'll come sit at the door and stare at the corner of the door. Uh, so I don't know. I don't want her getting neurotic on me. So uh, uh, I'll quiet down and get her to come back and let her go out and patrol. It is patrol time. You know, she has to have her nap and... Uh, digest her dinner and then she's got to go out and patrol and they well i think what she does is she goes out there and finds a spot to take another nap but anyway uh we'll see how that works out and, and i'm seeing that uh all right david you know, glad you're hanging in there richard's doing good too everybody's doing good fit for a princess now what could Zelensky? have that would be fit for a princess <laughs> i know that's a weird question after i put that video up i'm wearing leotards or what do they call them things lingerie or whatever he's wearing i had a friend of mine he well he, he was the guy that did some work for me as an old country boy he said my girlfriend wants me to buy her some lingerie <laughs> he called and he wasn't joking that's what he called him lingerie i like lingerie and uh so anyway Zelensky was wearing a lingerie. How you doing, jet lag? So anyway, I don't see anybody who heard the news. Uh hi Nikki, how are you? Yeah, and his heels too. His lingerie and his heels. Well, I'll tell y'all, it's sad. But uh, you know, is it a some kind of crazy mixed signal? Uh I, I don't get it. How you doing, B-Dog? Sinsen. I, I don't get it. But, uh, you know, we get news from the East that's not allowed to be heard in the West, et cetera, et cetera. As you say in that movie, uh, oh, what was that? The King and I, Yul Brenner. Do you all remember that? Rodgers and Hammerstein, Hammerstein musical, King, Yul Brenner dancing. 
uh, doing the king and I. He used to say, etc., etc. So maybe some of y'all didn't never see that movie. But uh, Yvonne, how you doing? So uh, let me see here. This is what I posted on my community page. Or did I erase it after I put it on there? Well, ain't I something? Zelensky bought King Charles's home. Here we go. A royal purchase. Now, if if it turns out to be proven wrong, I, I'm proved wrong or whatever. But I don't think it. I'll be proved wrong. Hi, Am. How you doing? David, Zelensky's spending money to buy a castle. Buying a house where Princess Di lived. Yes, indeed. So we got some uh, some answers there. Zelensky acquires High Grove House. Former resident of King Charles for 20 million pounds. I guess that's what it is. Royal purchase. Z Zelensky bought the mansion of Charles III, worth more than 20 million. That's from the London Crier. Now, is the London Crier like the, uh, we got anybody from the UK can tell us, is, is the London Crier kind of like the uh, the old uh, Inquirer or Globe News? Remember Globe News, Bat Boy. Bat Boy spotted again. Uh, I, I don't know, but Former butler to King Grant Harold claims that the deal was closed on February 29th during Zelensky's visit to the UK. Ah, huh. is that why uh, B.O. did a follow-up visit? I don't know. He went, remember that? He went to 10 Downing Street, B.O. So I'd rather have the UK have B.O. than us having B.O. He bought it with ble uh, bleeding heart donation money. I'll be darned. Is that kind of like a give, send, go, or a uh, GoFundMe for uh, uh, little characters that cancel elections and remain as president? Like I was saying in my last broadcast, day before yesterday was when elections were supposed to be held. Kicking bird, how you doing? So now Zelensky is uh, illegitimate. Illegitimate. So anyway, it goes on to say the Highgrove House estate was used by the King of Great Britain for 44 years. Did I say that right? Um, in this house, he and Princess Diana raised their children, Prince William and Harry. Princes William and Harry. Indirect confirmation of the sale of the mansion is the dis dismissal of the six High Grove employees. I don't know how many they had, but six of them, they had to put an egg in their shoe and beat it. Out of here. You're fired. <laughs> so, how to pay? How you doing? Yeah, I don't know what this, uh, I, I don't know if y'all remember Bat Boy and all that crazy stuff from Globe Magazine. Aliens found in a, a freezer behind a garage, and all kinds of stuff like that. So, uh, you know, I find it very interesting that uh, Zelensky canceled the election and that was supposed to be the day before yesterday or thereabouts. And uh, does that, under international law and past treaties, I bet you that canceling that election had, and the Minsk Accords also has given Putin or the Russians a lot more latitude, a lot more power, and a lot more options. Because when they broke off from the uh, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, more commonly known as the USSR, uh, they were given some uh, general autonomy under certain circumstances. One of, one of them being that they had to surrender their nuclear uh, weapons. And... Uh, 
I'm sure that a specific constitution and constitutional requirements have to be met for that treaty to continue to be valid. Get what I'm saying? Okay, so it might be the pretext to take the whole ball of wax and put it back in the Russian Federation, technically speaking. It's definitely a bargain chip, bargaining chip that somebody uh, as sharp as Vladimir Putin would not overlook. So I tell you, I, I, I'm like you guys. I watch these news clips misinformation disinformation omission of facts you know it used to make my blood boil now it's it's kind of like a clown show and uh i just shake my head i'm sad for the people that that aren't seeing through it excuse me while i have a sip of my coffee uh said he hadn't returned but if she does i'm gonna have to uh uh excuse myself to let her out uh but we'll see if she comes back anyway um Cameraman, how you doing? So, uh, oh, did you hear Eastman got disbarred? I hadn't had a chance to research articles on that. Now, Eastman was the attorney for uh, Trump. And I think the picture you remember him the most is he's wearing a uh, fedora, not a fedora, but uh, he went to his haberdasher and got, it, got himself a, uh, a hat much like Humphrey Humphrey Bogart was wont to wear and a overcoat and he was uh with Mr. T during his speech um on J and then the other uh number would be six and uh so he's been fighting disbarment in California for a long time now who's the one I keep we hadn't heard from him in a long time, and he was, uh, he surrendered his law license, and I thought that was strategic. Um, oh, gosh. But anyway, um, help me out, folks. So the one who, uh, who represented, uh, gets, wins big lawsuits and uh, was at the White House. You guys know his name. Um, Anyway, he surrendered his law. He's out of Georgia. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but anyway, he surrendered his law, law, law license a long time ago, uh, over a year ago, and all the lefties were, were puffing their chests out and um, act like it was a big victory. He surrendered his law license. Well, guess what? He did it so he wouldn't have to go through the expense, the time, and he's not had been found uh, liable for any uh, ethics violations or guilty of any kind of thing. Because with him surrendering his license, they can't really take it from him, right? He's like, hey, I'm retired. And uh, yeah, I saw him tip my tongue too, single songwriter. And uh, so they took him off the battlefield temporarily. And that's what I say is the the strategy behind uh, these uh, pitiful little um, guilty, uh, what do you call that? Um, I, I'm seeing a message up here. I, let me check it. All right. Well, I got, uh, oh, I got, I got a, someone who bought me uh, some coffee. I appreciate that, someone. And says, tell like it is. Bev and Mike, I must be on TV on the big screen. Oh, my gosh. That's great. So uh, I, they said, and I got another message from Buy Me A Coffee. They said I can put a polls on Buy Me A Coffee, but I, I'm not going to put any polls on there. Just for, for us to get, get – uh, uh, this channel support and connection with each other where I can read people's comments. But anyway, um, the plea agreement with uh, Sidney Powell and Jenna Ellis. The long and the short of those plea agreements are that after a certain amount of time, it's like it never even happened. 
It's expunged off the record. It's nothing. No, nobody loses their law license. There's no uh, offense to be uh, that can be uh, categorized as uh, a crime of immoral turpitude, which would affect one's ability to uh, m maintain a, a law license. So, uh, same thing with surrendering a law license, saving the expense. So Ellison, he took the slings and arrows. And why? Well, one thing, he's uh, still representing Trump. That's not to say that he can't uh, coach, you know, that he can't be available by phone for other people. But I think it was more for the exercise to see who in this bar association, who is who. Okay, because I think there's going to be a number of approaches to these uh, deficiencies that we're suffering from as far as who is allowed to be officers of the court, who is holding judgeships, all right? Who can, who can use their positions to menace, punish, threaten, rather than administer justice? And that, that extends to the bar. You know, attorneys are, are you know, they, they worry about complaints to the bar for a reason. And, all right, do we got to see who is manipulating the system through the Bar Association, okay? We're seeing who's manipulating the system as far as prosecutors go. We're see, we see who's uh, manipulating the system as far as DAs go. Ask Michael Avenetti. We're finding out who's been manipulating systems as far as uh, general practice, <laughs> You know, he's sitting, Cohen and uh, Avenatti are sitting, in, you know, or have been or are sitting in the joint. And uh, I think there's going to be, and I'll use the term mass, M-A-S-S, -S, mass suspensions, okay, of licenses. I think there's going to be mass revocations of license. I think, uh, uh, Suspensions could be for people who uh, just need to be vetted a little bit better. They need to uh, kind of like uh, PT. You gotta you gotta up your PT with your brain. You gotta uh, take a test or or pass some sort of psychological exam or or pop quiz on the Constitution before you can get unsuspended. How about that? And. Uh, Something a little bit more than pass the bar and uh, go to the bar, have a drink, and then you're you're a lawyer. Uh, I think it's too what it can lead to. Uh, what your station, your station in the nation. If 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 you want me to get Jesse Jackson about it, that level of deference to 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 have that and hold that i think they need to increase the standards and they need to increase uh the educational uh threshold and may they need to be able to maintain it i know they do continuing education from everything from plumbers electricians real estate agents and attorneys but i think it needs to be much more rigorous and uh I think we're going to be seeing that. And as far as revocation goes, we get people that are, are uh, knowingly, knowingly taking advantage of the law, knowingly, like uh, election interference is a good good example, okay? I mean, there, a reasonable, reasonable person could look at someone and say, there's no way that you can't know that what you're doing is interfering with this election. You're you're out of here. Your your license is gone. Go do something else for a living. And election interference is just one of them. There's 
there, there's much more ser serious issues that I think we're going to be seeing. But I put in my thumbnail to Judge Mercon. Khan exposed, right? And, uh, well, the first thing they were talking about was his daughter. And, you know, it's pretty... <sighs> Judges, if, if there's stuff that can cause a stink, uh, a conflict, um, they would rather be recused, okay? Judgeships are much like every other facet of our, of our society. There are good ones and bad ones. And I tell you, when you have to sit in a courtroom, and watch a judge, general district court, misdemeanors, traffic violations. It's it's a grind. And I told you all the story about my uh, the old judge I used to go in front of. And uh, one of the famous things I remember him saying was, you were looking for trouble and baby, you found it. Um, anyhow, he used to have a, what everybody, was debating whether it was a glass of water or what that was glass had on. And at the end of the day, you know, or by lunchtime, it needed to be filled back up. <laughs> and then by the end of the day, he'd kind of zigzag back to uh, chambers, but uh, he was a great judge, but day in, day out, day in, day out, broken record. A lot of things are broken records. You no, know, there's not a lot judges haven't seen as far as excuses, as far as misconceptions of the law. Uh, you know, a lot of people think, hey, I'm going in and I don't need a lawyer because I know everything and I'm certain I'm right. And they're not right. But anyway, you go through these things. I mean, there's only so many ways a ticket can go. Only so many ways an eviction can go. Uh, only so many ways, you know, and you do it over and over and over again. They got to make sure they do this, make sure they do that right. They got to worry about appeal. They got to worry about whatever. So when a conflict comes up, somebody points a finger and uh, so I, I think you're conflicted. Most of the time the judge will go, okay, get, get you another judge, fine with me fill his glass back up again and go on with some other cases. They don't want the aggravation. As a matter of fact, that happened one time. An attorney who who uh, got himself in a little pickle and, and had to go before the same judge. And he said, you don't like me and you know you don't like me. And he said, don't worry about it. Get yourself another judge. And uh, he's fine with it off his docket. So, uh, I'm going around Robin Hood's barn to get this point about Mercon. He, he doesn't want to be recused. With something as blatant as a immediate relative, immediate relative means in, in my eyes, I'm not an attorney, but uh, children, wife and children, brothers and sisters, immediate relative. In this case, his daughter, immediate relative, getting what? Four million bucks, her firm that she works for, uh, from Adam Schiff, who has been um, bumping heads and attacking Trump from day minus 200, you know, before he even became president. Hi, Island Girl. How you doing? Let's see. Debbie's here. Hi, William. Nice to see you. Canis, Lone Wolf, Georgia. Nothing new under the sun. Right. That's right. I'm going to put that on the screen. I felt like saying that the other day. Nothing new under the sun. Linda. Yeah, you got here in time, Linda. I just put a casserole in the oven. I can smell it already. Ha, 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 Roland, how you doing? So, uh, anyway, Jerry, how you doing? 
anyway, so here we have uh, this daughter. Now I heard the money went up from that somewhere, maybe up to eight million bucks. And you know, she gets a slice of that pie from uh, Adam Shifty Shift. And oh, put a gag order. Don't be talking about my my child. Like what? She's running around with a bag of Skittles, and they put a picture of her, uh, you know, with with bows in her hair from sixth grade or something. And she's probably pushing forty. I don't know. I don't know how old Judge Mercon is. Because he's got the nice tidy mascara all around his eyes. But anyway, he takes care of his countenance. Let's put it that way. Um, so Trump puts out yesterday something else. Let me see. I took a screenshot of it. Because he, he putting this gag order on about his daughter. Now, wait a minute. That is enough. You have an immediate family member getting millions of dollars from a political opponent, right? A headhunter. That's more than enough for any reasonable individual to say, you know what, I am conflicted or, or I have the appearance of a, a conflict. So yeah, you're right. You know, in the interests of justice, they use that a lot. Sometimes they, they're right when they use it in the interest of justice. No, he doesn't want to do that. He puts a gag order on Trump. Don't be talking about that no more. So yesterday, Trump puts out about his wife, Judge Mercon's wife. Where did I put that? She got some kind of contract. Here it is. She <laughs> get this. Get this. Uh, what? Let's see how many people are giving up with things. What is the? Uh, what's the conflict with Judge Mercon's wife? And don't be googling. No cheating. If you don't know, just say I don't know. Tell me, Mountain Man. You hurry up and tell me. You. Uh, but if you know, no, but don't Google it and then come back in like, oh, I, f I know. But, uh, who do you think she's been playing patty cake with? With fiscal benefit. Okay. What do they call that term? Oh, they call it something. Uh, Pecuniary interests. <laughs> yeah, I believe that's what it is. I don't know. I'm not an attorney. I was hoping to have one on as a guest one night. Talk about stuff that is being pushed. Uh, uh, Terry versus Ohio and a lot of different things that you all might want to be interested in to find out what's going on. You know, we keep we keep over these Supreme Court justices as far as they uh, uh, cases as far as you know they go directly to the election but there's a lot of stuff going on there's second amendment stuff there's uh, uh first amendment stuff you know that be interesting to know what's on the table so let's see what anybody guessing georgia said tell us i gotta give people enough time to uh, uh cogitate georgia because and then i'll start my music you know how it works da, da, da. we'll see Ah, uh, Melinda said she works with James. <laughs> Rick James. My name's Rick James. Oh, I can't say that word. <laughs> Ms. James. Okay. I'm Rick James. But anyway, um, yeah, let me see this article here. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're all like worms in a clump of dirt. I told you all that. More of Judge Mercon's anti-Trump bias exposed. This was by Loomerd, Laura Loomer, and then Donald Trump re it. He he didn't type anything out. He just 
reteed what Laura Loomer put up. <laughs> and uh, let me see here. Exclusive. Judge Mercon's anti-Trump bias continues to be exposed. Loomer broke that Judge Mercon's wife, Laura, L-A-R-A, -A, Laura Mercon, was a paid employee of New York Attorney General Letitia James's office. Peekaboo. Her and Peekaboo were working together. Now, this is this is so rank and open. You know the word rank. I don't mean like army rank, military rank. I mean rank. This is rank. And I don't know how he can how he can survive it. It it's a disgrace that the media with the power to ignore that they don't even, they don't acknowledge it. It is that rank. So we will uh, we'll continue to stir this pot full of dung and swamp and uh, whatever else you throw in that pot and let it get to a boil and start stinking. And that's what's happening. It's coming to a boil. Yeah, rank is the odor of mendacity. <laughs> Nikki, put it, I'm Rick James. Super freak. Super freaky, y'all. Let's see. Jerry, you had a cold. Apple cider vinegar. There you go. I think that judge I was talking about had peach brandy. That stuff's clear as a bell. Everybody thought it was vodka. I was saying, I know a little bit better. Because sometimes I, could, I walk by the bench, I get a little, little whiff. Peach. Just so happened, we both had a friend that uh, family made that stuff for 200 years. So anyway, 110 proof. Uh, not that I, you know, ever drank any of it. I, I heard about it, people talking about it. So I, I don't know. Uh, anyway, so here we have this odor of mendacity this green cloud this stench this uh, uh foul crap floating around f connecting that you just imagine a green cloud trailing from judge mercon it wafts wafts up under um adam schiff's nose and it floats on down to uh Letitia James's nose, and then it goes from there to, uh, it, you know, what's next? Fanny Willis? Fanny Willis? Well, it's going to be up there in uh, New York, all over the place. A lot of noses. What's his name? The Penguin, Nadler. Trump said he was battling Nadler 20 years ago in the real estate. When Nadler was a local politician in New York, so they they uh, forged these alliances. They come up with these um, funny little handshakes and secret deals and crap like that. And then down the road, they can pretty much read each other's minds and keep keeping Trump out, getting Trump. It's unspoken. All right. They know what to do, just like that one commissioner of the revenue or whatever she was for like Chicago put out a video. You all know what to do. And uh, that's the way they do it. So we're going to find out who all's tied together because you get that stink on you. You know, it's kind of like if you was a kid and you ever smoke cigarettes, you know, when you go home, mom's going to know you smoked cigarette, right? Moms know. And 
So if you're hanging around that funk and stink, you're not going to be able to go anywhere without somebody knowing it. Oh, if I get 100 likes, I'll go an extra 10 minutes. Well, single songwriter, how, many, how long is an extra 10 minutes? Roland, how you doing? Rotten fish, that's right. Bill, how you doing? Yeah, I'll smell of sulfur, Sherry says. Oh, potato wine. Oh, I see citrus, my word. That's interesting. Yeah, hit the thumbs up. So, uh, what's Mercon going to do? He puts another gag order on Trump. And, you know, the ridiculousness of it is, is going to be overwhelming. But the new services will take any red herring, anything other than what needs to be talked about, and throw it out there. Mika Brzezinski and Morning Joe, they're, they're kind of the bellwether for issues. Remember now, Mika Brzezinski's father was high up in the State Department in the, in the uh, swamp during the Carter administration. The big new Brzezinski, okay, was her father. And you can goggle him and read about him, but... Um, and Morning Schmo, we know, was a Republican believer, not representative, a, a rhino swampy swamper that uh, unfortunately lost a, a uh, intern at a young age that was found in his office unresponsive and uh, didn't survive. And he knew nothing about it. But Trump said, oh, I don't think so. I think you knew a little something about it. So more vested interest in the Trump. So anyway, they're the ones, they come out with kooky stuff, and MSNBC in general is really the flagship. We used to think CNN, but MSNBC's got them beat in my book. But you got to watch out for all of them. But what were they harping about? Truth Social. Trying to, right before our eyes, mold and uh, form that situation into possible criminality for Trump. That it is an illegal way for his donors to get him money. It's unregulated. The SEC should investigate. It only makes uh, $4 million a year. How can it be worth five or six billion? You know what? I hope they put their foots in their mouths with misinformation and the shareholders can sue their eyeballs out of their head. But I'm going to keep quiet about that because I might tip them off. You know how they listen to me and they don't let you all know they're listening to me. You know it's true because I'll tell you what, I'll tell you something else before we go into the true social business. Pat on the back, 18 inches away from a kick in the pants, right? But I'm doing it. Pat myself on the back because what was in the news today? that I read to you all uh, probably about three broadcasts ago, four, maybe four, about four or five days ago. And it has to do with Jack the Jerk, okay? The repugnant bully, the uh, bum off the street who has no business ordering Trump around or presenting anything for Eileen Cannon's court because he's illegitimate and improperly appointed and he's using funds that he's not entitled to. His entire office, millions of dollars, big salaries, okay? Transportation limos, uh, you know, order a bunch more stationery and stamps and stuff, whatever we need. I don't know. I want a projector. But anyway, Jack is all big mad. Why? Well, he's got a lot of things he's facing. And you can tell when you get him against the wall because they get aggressive. 
one thing they got him against the wall on, among many things, is his even his uh, legitimacy. All right, which I just described. He has no legitimacy to be in that position. He's a loser. Okay, lost uh, unanimously against Supreme Court. Got packed off to France to sit there and grow roots and turn into fung a fungal uh, growth in uh, at the uh, World Court. Then they bring him back, and uh, Eileen Can says, "Well, for jury instructions, I want the uh, jury to read." Uh, the Presidential Records Act, PRA. When you see those initials, PRA, you know what that is, Presidential Records Act. That's the main thing they're focusing on in the media, both sides of the media. I do believe she is also including the Clinton Sox case precedent. Okay? I believe... If it's not jury instructions, I'm sure it'll certainly be brought up before any potential jury. A flawed jury, by the way. Not a magic kingdom. Bunch of riffraff. So, uh, he goes nuts. You can't do that. You can't include Presidential Records Act. I'll get into why that's important in a second. But why I was patting on my back, myself on the back, is because he's changing his tactic. He's not only keeping up his other accusations, but he's adding in that Trump violated a previous executive order. And I don't expect you all to remember the number. But I read it verbatim. I put it on the screen because I was doing a picture show. Three broadcasts, maybe even two broadcasts, but somewhere around there, somewhere between two and four broadcasts ago, I did a picture show and I put a post from our favorite letter. And I always remind you all that there's almost 5,000 posts. And out of that 5,000, an old man with a cell phone plucks out one post, blacks out the identifier so you don't know which site it's from. I put it on the screen and read it verbatim. Today, uh, I remember an old lady, took, she used to, she'd get mad. She said, I, I want them out of my house. She went, pointed her finger up in the air. She said, today, today, today. So anyway, that's what I'm thinking about. Today, I put in my post. I mean, uh, what, what I put in my broadcast came up out of Jack Smith's uh, evil brain as a violation that Trump uh, is supposedly guilty of. One that Obama did concerning executive orders what yeah the executive order that i read just a couple of days ago executive order 13526 section 1.7 i still have the screenshot that i put up remember this is out of 5000 posts i put it up 3 days later jack smith's relying on it so that's how I know they're watching me. No, but anyway, um, I was pointing out the fact. And I've said in past broadcasts that this executive order by Obama, I believe he was finagled into or forced to sign. So classification prohibitions and limitations a, in no case shall information be classified, continue to be maintained as classified, or fail to be classified 
in order to, one, conceal violations of law, inefficiency, or administrative error. Two, prevent embarrassment to a person, organization, or agency. What? That's what you're relying on, Jack? No, but wait a minute. It gets better. Restrain competition, three, or four, prevent or delay the release of information that does not require protection in the interests of national security. You're going to rely on that, Jack? That makes me think that Jack might be put in a position to expose stuff, whether he wants to or not, or whether he is being forced into a corner where he's grabbing at straws because he knows the Presidential Record Act expressly allows Donald Trump to do what he did. This is the only peg he can hang his hat on, and it says you can't classify certain things to prevent embarrassment or to hide criminal acts that's forbidden. And we all know that what they're going after at Mar-a-Lago is a great many things they're trying to hide. One of them, Fast and Furious. And I had a viewer uh, uh, kindly correct me in the comments that I had that uh, uh, fast, fast, fast and Furious is the gun running operation, right? with Mexico, and what's the one crossfire hurricane was the one to uh, uh, blow up the Trump administration and get Trump out, right? Crossfire hurricane. I, I had to juxtapose, and I appreciate the uh, correction. So, not only that, we got a lot of deeper things people are going to be finding out about. Stuff Trump has already told us. JFK 9 and then the uh, two ones, right? The, the uh, type of evil, not just on little St. James Island. All kinds of stuff, all manner of stuff, plus the spying, plus the other two operations I told you about the five intelligence agencies, we can go down the list. That is what they're trying to hide. Trump's already declassified them. They know he's already declassified them when he removed them from the White House. According to the Presidential Records Act, he's got the discretion, the sole discretion if they, you know, don't want to buy that Clinton Sox case, he had he had classified stuff, and their own judge said he was fine with doing it. But now, I just think it's uh, there's no such thing as coincidence. Not, not I know stuff happens, right? But hey, it's not the first time I plucked something out of 5,000 posts and it was germane, okay, very shortly thereafter. So if he's going to try to go after Trump with, with Obama's executive order, you're going to have to live with it. And uh, it's all being entered into the record. How do you legally present evidence? In a courtroom or in front of Congress on the record, under oath. And that's what they're doing. So uh, th they can't help. They're in quicksand. The deep states and quicksand, but you know, a lot of people, human nature, 
they see themselves as infallible and they do their counter move and they're always pushing in their brain to checkmate their opponent, but they don't realize when they're about to get checkmated. Their arrogance, overconfidence, you mix that in with some fear, people make mistakes. And why I keep saying, you know, hey, you know, if somebody's new comes in, you're welcome to be here. And, uh, you know, just don't, you know, the rules, I say them enough. No stupid comments. Uh, uh, if you got something to say, say it. Because um, we want to reach out to other people. I don't want to echo, ch echo chamber. Because it came to me just sitting there having my morning coffee. If the people believe what they're told, okay, you've got the people and then you've got tyrants, evil. If, if they continue to believe whatever they're told, tyrants can get away with whatever they want. It's really that simple. If you're not skeptical, if you don't look at both sides of the pancake, you're not going to be able to, they, they'll get, they will get away with, with stealing an election. Where we see it as outrageous, we see it as blatant, we look at people and go, don't you see what they're doing? And a lot of them genuine, genuinely don't because they believe whatever they're told. And then the deep state gets away with whatever it wants. So that's why we continue to invite people to come in. And the thing is that our generation is waning. Yeah, we're getting older. But we remember JFK. We remember a society that was much less strangulative, okay, much less restrictive, where people didn't have to go. Am I? I don't collect rainwater. I don't raise chickens, they say themselves. But am, am, am I going to be at the point where I can't? If I decided I wanted to, simple things like that. And as Reagan said, since 69, in his speech in 69, they have the tools. They've been having the tools for the last half a century to take everything you have. but it's for the greater good. Oh my gosh, that brings me to something I, I wasn't going to talk about, but I am now. Now that I think about it, greater good, I, I use that word. Let me see what's going on in the chats. Hi, Gary. No, I don't worry too much. Try not to. <laughs> Darting around, how you doing? Who did I miss? I miss anybody. That's right. You just got to think about it. And they don't want to, uh, they don't want the people to see. But there's so much uh, confetti they can throw around to do it this way, where he, Trump forces their hand, Jack's hand. Jack is forced to rely on that executive order. That one part of the order, he thinks he can trap Trump, but the other parts of the order is where they get trapped. What is the purpose of hiding the information about Crossfire Hurricane? What is the uh, national security problem about hiding uh, the other issues I talked about. There's no national security. It's to 
prevent embarrassment or to hide illegal activity, which is expressly forbidden. Expressly forbidden. Hi, Angela. Nice to see you. Gary said he got something to say and he's going to say it once. I have to keep my eye on because you're only going to say it once. Let's see. Deep shit. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, boogeyman enemies. The uh, What is it now? The, we talked about it the other night. Bird flu jumping to cows and from cows to humans. And then they have something else. Uh, it sounds like uh, some type of meningitis. I can't think of the name of it. They say it's highly contagious. Meninge uh, something. Remember that first part, meningitis, uh, but not meningitis, but the first uh, part of that word. Chris, how you doing? I'm waiting to see what Gary was going to say one time. There it is. The court cases are dumb and will prevail to nothing. That's right. There's to a to a uh, discerning person without I call it knee jerk lazy logic. They say, "Oh, Trump is bad. Trump uh, uh, stealing classified information." You know that is lazy logic. Yeah, FISA is a fun uh, boomerang. Works both ways. Cameraman's here. Let's see. Yeah, did everybody hit the like? You better check. Just to be sure. Hit that like button. So, uh, the greater good. Well, I, why did I bring that up? Have you all been following that case where that guy uh, got in trouble? Uh, Big, big trouble. He's there. They, he's on trial. He could go away for life. He was uh, tubing, and one of his friends lost the phone. He tried to find the phone. Put a one in the chats if you know the case I'm talking about. Uh, gotten some he uh, in water up to his mid thigh or ankles, depending on where you're waddling around at. And uh, got into a uh, hubba baloo with a bunch of kids, drunken, smoked up kids, uh, as they are wont to do when they're floating down the river. And uh, then some other adults got in, eventually turned into 13 people. And uh, before you know it, a knife came out and... Uh, Four people injured and a fifth one did not survive. Do you did you all hear about? It? Put a one in the chats if you heard about it. Uh, I don't know if that's the name. Of, no, it's not a mono. It's a. Uh, uh, I remember it being a. Uh, what it what was the uh, word I just said. But anyway, this happened in 2022. The guy's been sitting in jail. Uh, he came over here when he was 16, I believe, from Romania. His parents brought him over. Uh, Middle-aged guy. I think right now he's 55 or 54. And uh, anyway, they showed a video clip. And one of the group, kid weighed like 230 pounds. He, on a, a football team, uh, muscular, uh, he was, he took a video of some of this and, uh, they started calling. He was, he's by himself looking for this cell phone and he, he dropped his scuba mask. Cause I guess he was using the mask to look underwater and they came up on him and said he was in the way blocking their way. And for some reason, they started calling him a uh, uh, predator, okay? 
and I won't use the language and the words, and they were laughing and uh, mocking this guy and saying he was a, uh, uh, that he assaulted people. I won't use the words uh, predator uh, of little children and things like this. And then this other bunch shows up of adults. They were in their 20s. And they start screaming and yelling at him. But this guy, so anyway, they punch him and he falls in the water. He tries to get back up. They throw him back down in the water again. Uh, the first time he ended up in the water, they slapped him in the head or punched him in the head. Anyway, next thing you know, a knife, uh, people getting podged, people getting podged and uh, with a knife. And you, I, you already know the result. So uh, he's on trial, could go to jail for the rest of his life, four counts of uh, attempted and one count of uh, murder. So um, anyway, this kid's taking a video of him. And you all can make your own determination. You read the comments and make your own determination as to what the guy was doing. But uh, this kid that was, and he was a person of color, okay, the one who was calling him a, a predator and a assaulter, uh, was laughing. He used a term. And the, the defense attorney said, what do you mean by that? And uh, he said, uh, for the greater good. I, I forget what the term was he used. Something like, uh, oh, for the culture. When they were uh, around him, berating him, shrieking, laughing. Ah, look at that. Pedo, look at that. Uh, you know, he's he's after kids. And they're in the water, uh, around him, in his face. He said, for the culture, just before he got punched and knocked down. And the lawyer said, what do you mean for the culture? He said, well, it's a saying we got for the greater good. For the greater good. And, uh, you know, take it for what you want to take it for. But we got a culture clash, okay? For the culture, for the greater good, you're gonna, this guy's going to get surrounded, shoved around, punched, knocked down. Uh, but his group was a couple hundred feet away or more floating down the river. They were all 50-some-year-olds floating on, on the river. His wife and friends were uh, way out of any any distance to help. And uh, we'll see what that jury does. I, I would have I pursued that a little more. What, what are you talking about for the culture? What are you talking about for the greater good? And uh, but the, the attorney thought better of it. So I have no idea uh, about the jury. I have no idea about anything, but it's an interesting case. And I don't know if the guy is going to testify himself. They just had testimony today. I watched the testimony right after it happened. And uh, we'll see how it goes. But one minute you're with your friends, drinking beer, tubing on the river. Uh, and he also had a uh, like a quadruple bypass a few years earlier. He had heart conditions and everything else. And uh, I, you know, you hear all that stuff. And but you see in the comments, he needs to go away for the rest of his life. You know, you, of course, you need to hear all the testimony. You need to hear everything that happened. Watch the video and go from there. No knee jerk judgments. Already one life gone ruined over this so and it's a big decision to put somebody away for the rest of their lives so anyway i just thought it was interesting uh that that notion or chant or slogan or whatever they want to call it was was being verbalized while this person was uh uh being uh put in a bad position
what's going on. What's going on, sissy? Oh, all right. Oh, I see their BS, Gary. Yeah, I see that bullet. I see right through it like cellophane. Tuberculosis is making a comeback. Yes, uh, that was making a comeback. Um, and nobody reported on it during uh, the Obama uh, surge of immigrants. You lost a classmate to cancer. Sorry to hear that, sissy. To cancer. Yeah, we can use our discernment. We're the words why we're here. And we, what we want is people that are starting to see. We want we want them to come join us without animus and listen to what we have to say. What do you guys think about the eighth? I've, I've seen a lot of uh, concerns about the eighth. That's right, Georgia folks are in for a rude awakening. We're trying to wake them up uh, as fellow countrymen, countrymen and women. We're trying to to um, wake them up. You know, this thing about the cancer, I was thinking, and I've, I've talked about it in the past, I don't remember my grandparents' day and age that, it wasn't, everybody wasn't running around with asthma, high blood pressure, uh, all these different types of cancers. You don't read about it in older books. You don't read about it in the Bible. You don't read, uh, you know, Zechariah had high blood pressure, and I told thee to get thee to the fig tree and eat you some figs. You know, you didn't hear anything like that. You're welcome, sissy. Yeah, we'll stay on the path, Gary. Nana Jill, nice to meet you. Or me, you may have been in the Chatsburg Pass. I don't remember. It's been a while. So, uh, anyway, that may be a trial you all want, might want to check out. It's dramatic. I don't know if this gentleman is going to take the stand or not. Uh, it's uh, it's one of those things where you hear the opening statement. You say, man, that guy, why did you do that? Then you hear the defense opening statement. You say, oh, my gosh, what would I do in that situation if I was surrounded by a bunch of people chanting about that I was a P3DO file and that uh, for the culture, they're going to knock my head off. What would I do? So, yeah, it's really interesting. And, and the point I was making before I started reading the chats was that one minute they were soaking up the sun, floating down a river in inner tubes, middle age. Next thing, he's in jail for two years straight. Now he's uh, uh, going to find out if he's going to be there for the rest of his life. That's just how quick. Things can go south. And that's why we have to keep our heads. Keep our heads. Okay? And we have to uh, conduct ourselves, what the term was used earlier, with discernment. Okay? Well, uh, discretion sometimes is a better part of valor. Okay? And if you can keep your head while all around you are losing theirs, uh because you don't want to, just what Mr. T said, you don't want to give the reason. Here, uh, a couple of people posted about this lady that's going to go up for a trial. Um, nice old lady. And, and uh, Patricia Dixon put a picture. I hope you all checked out per Patricia Dixon.
because she puts up these posts. Uh, Rebecca Laveras, Lavras, the praying grandma who walked and prayed on a capital steps, peacefully entered the rotunda for ju just 10 minutes and prayed while holding two small American flags, was found guilty in a DC courtroom for walking around the Capitol on January 6th. She faces a year in prison. The praying grandma. All this time, and now she's just getting trial. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. Well, you know, that shock, uh, that, that business about uh, Zelensky buying that palace. I've got my next broadcast, I'll, I'll go over some new crystal updates. But what in the battlefield, things are going to hell in a handbag in Ukraine, okay? Uh, there's one major city that they're knocking on the door of, and they're going to get in, okay? The Russians, they're going to get, they're going to get in there. And uh, they're pretty much doing things at their, their own leisure. And you got Zelensky buying this mansion in Britain that was owned by the royal family. Well, what else was going on? Well, Reuters reported about Trump meeting with Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Salman, the New York Times reported. And everybody's wondering what happened there. What, what is going on there? And has he met with them anymore since he left office? Republican and U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump recently spoke with Saudi pr Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, uh, the New York Times reported on Wednesday, citing two people briefed on the discussion. And, of course, um, all the Democrats are... trying to intimate that he's doing something illegal, something nefarious. Uh, who knows? But he didn't meet with them for nothing. I'll put it that way. And they're a big player in bricks, among a great many other things. So then I also got an aerial view of this uh, mansion that uh, Zelensky bought that Prince Charles used to live in. But real quick, look what is on the edge. The edge of the table getting ready to fall. Jack Smith's cases, the motions to have him kicked off the case, uh, the judge's instructions to the jury about reading the, the Presidential Records Act. Okay. And they have to find him innocent uh, according to the Presidential Records Act. That's why Jack Smith's going nuts. What's going before the Supreme Court as far as Trump's immunity? You also have Judge McAfee is doing hearings, and I talked about them in the past broadcasts, where a Georgia official, after some questioning and Batting stuff back and forth, Judge McAfee was saying, okay, so some of these ballots did get run through uh, to be scanned, and then the others were, right? Well, no, this, this bat, 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 but double talk, double talk. And he said, well, did, but the others were, right? And then one member of the uh, government attorney said, uh, actually, None of the ballots were run through for signature verification. We're talking over 100,000 ballots. 
that was going on a couple of days ago, but it's still ongoing because they have a uh, disbarment hearing for Jeffrey Clark, a former United States Assistant Attorney General. They're having this disbarment hearing. He's facing various charges. And Mark Wingate, a Fulton County Election Board member, testified he voted against certifying the 2020 election because the county did not verify signatures on 149,000. This is not the ones that were supposed to go through the machine from a different hearing. This was on a hearing that was going on today, on this disbarment hearing, on 147,000 of the type of ballot I can't mention on this platform. It's the kind that you put in an envelope with a stamp. Remember, Trump only, law, air quotes, lost Georgia by 11,000 votes, right? 140,000. You got Letitia James. Well, I'm, now I'm, I'm in Georgia. Talking about Georgia. Fanny and her and Nathan are looking at and not, not smoke and mirrors, not just stuff people trying to dream up like MSNBC. Factual issues are pointing towards criminal charges for both Fannie and Nathan Wade. On top of these discrepancies that are being dumped right out in front of Judge McPhee. Then you go to Letitia James. What she's being exposed with is being hand in glove with Judge Mercon and his wife. What's going to come out of that? Trump's been known about this for a while. All of it. And his team, I'll put it that way. You know, he's a, he's a man. He, he's, what did he, what did he say? He's got a protective force. Okay. You would need a team of attorneys, a team uh, to know, to do all this investigation, to come up with all the stuff they're coming up with and going to be coming up with. And that's what he's got around him. Remember what he talked about, an angel in the room when they were trying to impeach him during the Mueller report, a protective force. Who's going to come out of the woodwork? There's going to be surprises. I think Rudy Giuliani is a sleeper. I talked about, oh, who's the attorney I talked about uh, broadcast before last? I know you all remember. Joe DeGeneva. I, I wondered why he fell off the map. Joe DeGeneva. Rudy Giuliani, people we haven't heard from in a while. Jeff Sessions, when he lost his bid for to regain his Senate seat, he was on the news with a smile on his face. He said, that's okay, because I've got a lot of convictions I want to pursue. How many of you all remember Jeff Sessions saying that? Joe was on Rumble today. Good. So the lefties always talk about bombshells. It's a bombshell. Well, this disclosure about Judge Mercon's wife and Letitia James is a bombshell. As if the daughter getting all that money from Adam Schiff wasn't a bombshell. Fonnie Willis was flying higher than a kite until what happened? A bombshell out of nowhere. Terrence, okay, telling on Nathan. And we didn't even know that was going on behind the scenes. 
So there's a lot more stuff going on behind the scenes. A lot of news reports were saying Jack Smith threatened Eileen Cannon, and in a way he did. He's very smarmy in his motions. And they get aggressive when they start to get cornered. And that's what's happening with Jack Smith. I don't think he's going to be the first to fall. I think the classified documents case has got to go forward to put on the record everything Trump wants to declassify that they're after trying to prevent and trying to stay covered up. The Georgia case with Fulton County has got to go forward. And that is to present all the evidence of actual uh, disruptions, I'll put it that way, of the vote tallies. That's a good way to put it, disruptions of the vote tallies. So those cases have got to go forward. The one I, I think doesn't need to and might get uh, kicked to the wayside is uh, Alvin Bragg's deal, okay? Alvin Bragg's deal. Oh, and uh, before I close, I don't know how many likes I got. Or I'm going to shut it down if I don't have a... You guys give me my likes. Um, did you all hear about this Twitter... What do they call it? It looks like a private Twitter chat group that... Uh, what's her name? Kathy Griffith was bragging about. And it's got... In this chat group... Mary Trump, who who hates Donald, you know, been after him, making up a bunch of stories and acting like she's some kind of uh, jilted relative uh, with inside secrets. And then you got E. Jean Carroll's part of the chat group. And uh, who else was part of that chat group? It's like four or five of them. All a bunch of stinkers that have been going after Trump. All right, Richard said, I got a 108. Nikki's going to bed. But anyway, they say that uh, that those hats, I think Joy Behar was one of them. Just all the... Uh, nasty old hags that are that are constantly uh, pestering trump and they say that that, that uh, they're going to subpoena the, that chat group can you imagine like like a dozen of these these nasty old hens talking amongst themselves thinking what they're saying is private who knows what they might have let the cat out of the bag about who knows what they might have been constructing or plotting some kind of theme they could attack him with uh, that would be, you could just lay out the chat and say, look, they're making stuff up, libel, slander. Uh, it's going to be a hoot. I mean, I think that's just for entertainment for the general public. Uh, if they can, if they can get that chat group and then let those people, uh, what they thought private messages out. If they can let that stuff out, man, that's going to be an embarrassing mess. <laughs> well, not all old hens are nasty, but these this bunch I'm talking about nasty old hens. All right, folks. Oh, I wiped something off my board. I got to watch out when I swipe this screen. All right, folks, I, I appreciate you all spending your precious time with me. And uh, keep in mind what I said. If people believe whatever they're told, they'll get away with whatever they want. 
And uh, we can reach out to people when we're level-headed, when we have rational thoughts in our mind. The eighth is coming up. Uh, people are worried about the eclipse. All right. A lot of things happen on the eighth. If something does happen, it is from the de devices and minds of mankind, people. All right. There's only one supernatural force. Uh, Luciferians, Satan, whatever, you, however you want to put it, they get their power from ideations, all right, put into the minds of human beings. The only one that can do anything beyond the uh, schemes of men to make a change in this world is God. Everything else comes from the schemes of men, evil men. So uh, keep that in mind, folks. So you all have a great evening. Uh, hit the notification bell. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe so you know when I go live. Thank you, for everybody, for giving me a like uh, and for subscribing. You all have a great night. This is Mountain Man, over and out.